The excitement just continues to build. We can't wait to see that first pitch. The tides are turning in the MLB. New stars are stealing the headlines. With swing and a miss. He struck him out. 100 miles an hour. Slow starters are starting to turn things around. Got under this one. Is it deep enough to right field? Carry Carpenter to the wall. It is gone. And we have a new best record in baseball. And it's a complete game shutout for Aaron Nola today in New York as the Phillies sweep the quick two game series and they've won their 30th game already this season. All signs point toward 2024 being an electric year. He leaps and he makes the catch up against the wall. He takes a home run away from T. Oscar Hernandez and that is the play of the year. Here's how everything shook out in week seven. The storyline that dominated the headlines last weekend was the debut of number one pitching prospect in baseball, Paul Skeens. Skeens is just 21, but is already one of the hardest throwing starters in baseball. His talent was on full display as he struck out seven Cubs in four innings. When Skeens left the game, it was 6-1, to one, but the Pirate bullpen offered no relief. By the end of the fifth, it was 8-6 Chicago. Pittsburgh's offense was able to battle back though, with Andrew McCutcheon offering the finishing blow. Hey, on the fly ball to deep center field, and wouldn't you know it, Andrew McCutcheon clears the deck with a cannonball. This would be the Pirates' only win in the series, however, as Javier Assad and Kyle Hendricks dialed up good outings of their own to win the series. Chicago would head on to face the Braves during the week. The Braves were coming off a series win of their own against the Mets in New York. It was a home run frenzy in Game 1 for Atlanta before in Game 2, Max Fried would hold the Mets hitless through 7 innings. In a battle of two of the best rotations in baseball, Shodui Managa continued his dominance, striking out 8 Braves in 5 innings of work. Unfortunately for the Cubs, Reynaldo Lopez was just as good, and the Cubs bullpen couldn't keep the Braves shut out. A Cubs starter who's been even more surprising than Imanaga was Javier Assad. He now has a top 5 ERA in baseball after shutting out the Braves over 6 innings on Sunday. This time, both the offense and the bullpen did their job as well, giving the Cubs a 7-1 victory. The Braves would take the series though, on the back of another 2017-esque Chris Sale performance. The best record in baseball now belongs to the Phillies, as they skyrocketed up the standing since the start of May. Last weekend, they demolished Marlin pitching in a series win before taking on the Mets in a four-game series during the week. The starting rotation again looked fantastic for Philly in this series. Aaron Nola threw a complete game shutout on Tuesday, and Ranger Suarez dropped his ERA even lower with a zero earned run outing on Wednesday. The offense looks dangerous, and the Phillies could find themselves back in the pennant picture if they keep playing at this level. Before we get into the rest of this week's action, let me give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Odds Jam. Odds Jam is the top choice for data-driven sports betting, tracking over 260 sportsbooks in real time. With Odds Jam, you'll become a more profitable sports better, using strategies similar to those employed by successful investors and traders. How does it work? Thanks to the Odds Jam Arbitrage tool, which identifies discrepancies in sports betting lines across the market. This tool finds arbitrage betting opportunities, guaranteeing risk-free profits by spotting these differences. You can even bet on both sides of the market and still make a profit. But that's not all. Odds Jam also offers a positive EV calculator to help you optimize your bet sizes and a bet tracker to monitor your profits across all your sportsbook accounts. By using Odds Jam, you'll bet smarter and more responsibly, leading to long-term profitability. Plus, they're so confident in their product, they offer a 7-day free trial. Ready to try it out? Use code POTENTIAL for a 35% discount on your first month. Thanks again to Odds Jam for sponsoring today's video, now let's get back into the action. Heading into this week, there was no team hotter than the Twins. Despite a lineup that still isn't all the way healthy, the team has found ways to win games. They would be heading to Toronto to face the Blue Jays who can't seem to find any rhythm at the moment. In Game 1, Joe Ryan had his best outing of the season, throwing 7 innings of one run ball to pick up the win. In Game 2, the Twins' bats jumped all over Kevin Gosman, opening up a 7-1 lead. The Blue Jays finally show some life though. Score. Behind him, Schneider, he'll score. We are tied. 
coming all the way back to steal Game 2. But Bailey Ober put the series to rest in Game 3, striking out a season-high 10 batters for the win on Sunday. A nice series win for Minnesota, but they would face a tougher test during the week, taking on the Yankees. New York was coming off a series win against the Rays where they left Tampa with a bang, hitting five homers in a 10-run performance on Sunday. In Game 1, Ryan Jeffers would lead off the game for the Twins with a home run in the first inning, but to the horror of Twins fans, this would be the only run the team scored in the entire series. Carlos Rodon and Marcus Stroman both put up quality starts before Clark Schmidt had his best start of his career in Game 3. Swing and a miss. Kirilov down on strikes. That's strikeout number eight for Clark Schmidt. Eight scoreless innings with eight strikeouts dropped Schmidt's ERA below 2.5 on the season. This is the most complete Yankee team we've seen in some time. The rotation and bullpen are both top three in the league, and the offense is much more well-rounded this season. The Yanks look like the team to beat in the AL right now, and they'll be even more formidable when they get Garrett Cole back. Meanwhile, the Royals were looking to stay in form against the Angels. The Royals have the fourth most wins in the American League and kept that trend going, winning three out of four in Anaheim. Unlike KC teams in the past, this Royals team feels capable of winning games in a multitude of ways. Frazier hits one deep toward right. If it's fair, it's gone in the corner. That is a home run for Adam Frazier. And the Kansas City Royals strike in the ninth inning. The lineup is probably still the weak point, but it has enough talent to score runs in bunches at times. Maybe what the team has gotten from guys like Alec Marsh and Seth Lugo is a little too good to be true, but for now the Royals look like a threat in the AL Central. After taking care of business in LA, the team would face a tougher opponent in the Mariners during the week. Seattle recently took the lead in the West and extended that lead after beating the A's over the weekend. The Mariners have arguably the best rotation in baseball, and if they stay healthy this team could be a real problem in the postseason. In Game 1, George Kirby showcased the strength of the rotation, throwing seven shutout innings to grab the win. In Game 2, it looked like Logan Gilbert was going to do the same until Nelson Velasquez came up to bat in the seventh. Against this pitcher, swing and a fly ball left field. Back goes Haggerty, still going, looking up, and it is gone! It's a three-run homer, and the Royals take a 3-1 to one lead here in the seventh inning. This sent the series to the rubber match on Wednesday. Alec Marsh and Brian Wu battled through the first five innings, only giving up one earned run each. But Seattle's bullpen was able to hold on with Andres Munoz shutting the door for a five-out save. Swing and a miss. He put him away on the next pitch. Two down. Now the crowd on its feet. Munoz. With the Rangers sputtering so far in May, the Mariners have a chance to really put pressure on the division and stay hot with this series win over KC. Entering this week, no team had a worse record in baseball than the Rockies. This wasn't really a surprise though, as the team had seemingly given up on 2024 before the season even started. They would host the reigning world champions last weekend when the Rangers came to town. John Gray would take the mound versus his former team as the Rangers looked to punch back in the AL West. Both Gray and Rocky starter Austin Gomber threw well over six innings, but it was Charlie Blackman who was able to break through for Colorado. Overall this year. Charlie's going to spoil the strategy. He hits it over the head of Tavares all the way to the wall. It's going to score two. Charlie Blackman, Mr. Clutch again. Four, two, Rockies. It was a rocky hit parade in Game 2, and Colorado was able to secure the sweep on Sunday on the back of a shutdown team pitching performance. Upsets like this happen all the time in baseball, but to make things even weirder, the Rockies continued on to San Diego where they swept the Padres as well. Does this mean Colorado's back in the playoff hunt? No, but it was an encouraging sign with so many different young players contributing to the perfect week. Another struggling team that got back on track this week was the Astros, as they took care of business against the Tigers and the A's. Kyle Tucker has been sneakily one of the best hitters in baseball so far this season. That ball hit hard past the first baseman, J.D. Davis, towards the corner. Tucker is going to think about second. Now he's going to go there late. His head first slide in time. Ball gets away. Here comes Altuve. 1-0 Astros and with Justin Verlander seemingly still in good form, the team obviously has a ton of potential. The rotation continues to get healthier, and if the worst is behind Houston, we could be in for a dogfight in the AL West.
If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps me out a ton. Thanks for watching.